today we're going to show you how to build this model rocket from Lock Precision and add in a built-in ignition system, demonstrate how to use that with this electronics payload and the receiver unit that will work with your Android smartphone and the Mission Control app. From the model rocket kit we're going to use the body tube, the nose cone, motor mount assembly, the fins, parachute, and a fire blanket. For the electronics add-ons we have the electronics payload, the receiver, some fiberglass insulation, and our ignition cable. So some extra things we're going to need are a 29 millimeter motor retainer, used 29 millimeter motor, an ejection charge baffle, 3D printed, 3D printed rail guides, and a nylon shock board. Links for all this stuff will be in the description. All right, some tools you're gonna need is some CA glue and activator, a 3 16 drill bit, a one and three quarter hole saw, some tape, we got painter's tape and Kapton tape, and some sort of hand saw. We're gonna start by assembling the motor mount, and I'm gonna start by gluing on the threads for the motor retainer. So I'm just gonna use medium CA glue. On these motor mounts, we just got to add a hole for the uh, ignition wire to go through. So this is the upper motor mount. It has a hole for the, the shock cord hook. And I'm just going to put a hole next to it. And down here, I'm going to put a hole anywhere in the center. And later, we'll just make sure they line up. And just glue on the lower motor mount. And this is going to butt up against the threads. So we don't have to worry about spacing anything out yet. Add the uh, shot cord hook in there. Just going to thread it in by hand. on the upper motor mount now and I'm just going to use the uh, one of the fins to set the spacing between the two. Okay and now I'm going to make sure my two holes line up roughly. They don't have to be exact. All right, so the kit doesn't include any kind of uh, motor stop up in the top. And I'm only gonna be using this with E and F motors from Estes. So I just want the motor to stop right about there. So I'm gonna use an old motor and uh, just glue it in the top like that and then cut it off flush. I'll pull that motor out just to make sure it doesn't get uh, stuck with the glue. I'm just going to use a handsaw to cut that back flush with the end of the motor tube. All right, so now we can glue on our uh, ejection charge baffle here. All right, so now we can tie on our shock cord. Now I'm gonna run the uh, motor ignition cable through those holes that we drilled. And these have two uh, DuPont connectors on the end with no plastic casings. The other end has plastic covers on them. 
So the end without the plastic covers is going to go out to the motor. And now I want this section to be insulated also, so I'm going to take our fiberglass insulation and I'm just going to cut a piece to scan that, span that gap. Okay, so this fiberglass insulation is going to fray over time, so to keep that from fraying, what I'm going to do is take my thinnest uh, CA glue and I'm just going to let that soak in all the way around the fiberglass. thinner the better so it really soaks in. Then just gonna hit it with the activator. And once it's cured I'll just cut it flush. So now I want to set the spacing of these ignition wires correctly. So what I'm going to do is put an igniter in the motor. And then wire them into the ignition cables as they would be on the launch pad. Then I'll glue them in place. All right, looks good on this end, so I'll add some glue at the, to seal up this hole here. So now we want to protect these uh, clips at the end here, so I'm going to just take out the igniter. I'm going to use some of our small uh, fiberglass insulation and slide that over each connector and back through the hole. So uh, now we want to protect this, uh, we want to protect our ignition cable. So we're going to run our longer piece of fiberglass insulation cable through this, uh, our last piece of fiberglass insulation there. So I'm just going to try to tape two pieces together and see if I can feed it through the fiberglass. All right, I'm just gonna pull that down over the top of that as much as I can. Before we glue the motor mount into the body tube, we're just gonna do test fire uh, and burn a igniter here just to make sure uh, all our connections are good here. So this end will attach to the electronics payload and it'll go to the relay. One to the battery and one to the relay. Okay, so that power is on there, and I have the uh, receiver connected to my smartphone and that pulled up. So we'll just. that would have been a successful ignition. So we're good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna feed the wires and the shock cord through the body tube. And then we're gonna glue the motor mount into place. Add some glue on this before I put it in there. Okay, I'm just gonna add down at the bottom end of this. 
Okay, now I'm gonna assemble the fins one at a time. All right, so now we can install all the three fins. Just gonna hit every edge here, and then we'll put a bead on the outside. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up a one and three quarter inch access hole. Electronics paper for the nose cone. And I'm gonna use a one and three quarter inch hole for this. All right, so I'll just clean that up with the utility knife probably. So our ignition wire has a quick disconnect connector right here. And the point of that is so that uh, when the parachute deploys, uh, the shock cord is longer than the ignition cable, and so it's just going to break right there, and we won't put any strain on the ignition cable. So that comes apart, and this side we're just going to uh, feed into the nose cone, and then I'll glue this into place. That'll come out that hole. We'll give ourselves some slack, pretty much right in the middle. We'll just give ourselves some slack on this end so that it's easy for us to connect to the electronics payload. Okay, so in order to protect the electronics payload in the nose cone, I'm just gonna, just gonna fill the nose cone with bubble wrap. Okay, so I'm just gonna pack this up uh, as if I was getting ready for a flight. So I added my fire blanket onto the shock cord and over top of the fiberglass. I tied off the parachute and I tied off the shock cord to the nose cone. And then I have a piece of Kapton tape uh, to go around and cover our access bay up. So I'll wire this guy in again. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is glue on these rail guides. I like these little 3D printed ones because they match the body tube diameter so they just sit in place. A lot easier to work with than the tube that they give you. Let's just go for it. All right, to glue the second one on place, I'm just gonna use the uh, launch rod as a guide. All right, so it's looking good. I'm just gonna sand down some of those uh, weld beads and throw a coat of paint on it, and then we'll take it out to the range and test fire it. Okay, so off camera, I, uh, I filled in the uh, filled in the tail fin fillets there and sanded everything down and slapped a layer of paint on it. And then up in the nose cone, I sanded down this surface here and sand it down the inside of the tube a little bit just so this slides nice and smooth. And I re I cut a better piece of uh, capped on tape so that it would sit flat. flat. Okay, so let's do a, uh, we're ready to take this out in the field now, so let's just do another test burn to make sure it's, everything still works and then we'll take it out in the field. Okay, so we got the payload wired up here and we're gonna do a quick test burn on the bench before we take it outside.
Alright, that looked good. 